We're going through here and we need to remove some suckers. So suckers are where we've got a new growing point that's trying to establish. And every tomato plant can have a sucker that forms it everywhere a leaf goes through and attaches to the stem. So there's gonna be a primary sucker and a secondary sucker. So the first ones that we see are almost always the primary suckers. And then as the plant ages, we run, uh, we run into having some secondary suckers that we remove as we're doing our cluster pruning or going through and doing our lower leaf removal, so on and so forth. But we wanna go through and take out these primary suckers once they're about an inch to an inch and a half long so that the plant can focus its energy onto one growing point and not trying to support many different growing points. So the other thing that we're gonna go through and look at here is cluster pruning. So on these big beefsteak varieties, those at five, six, seven fruit on a cluster, but we wanna prune those back generally somewhere between three and four fruit per cluster, um, depending on how vegetative or reproductive that plant is. Basically help ourselves have larger fruit, right? I would rather harvest three half pound fruits than six quarter pound fruits, right? From a lay, which we're selling tomatoes generally by the pound. From a labor standpoint, it's gonna go through and be much more efficient to harvest three half pound tomatoes instead of say six quarter pound tomatoes. Same weight, but less labor to go through and harvest free fruit over six fruit. So when we remove our suckers, we basically just grab a hold of them, pull them back and they pop right off. We've got another bigger cluster up on the top. I'm gonna go ahead and grab a hold of that, pull that down, and it comes right off. So again, the best time to do this job in the mornings, because we are opening up wounds on the plant to go give us all day for those to callus over to help minimize our risk for disease and uh, pathogens going through and entering the plants. We've got one, two, and third fruit here that has been pollinated and is just starting to set. And so we're not gonna want to keep any of these on here. So we're gonna come in here and cluster prune this back to right here. We're leaving one, two, three fruit on the cluster. And then we'll tie on a J hook here onto this truss and support the fruit. What I'm gonna keep is one, two, and three, which means I have to remove this here and then I'm gonna remove here. So we'll come up here first, remove those. And then I'll come back here, remove these, leave us a spot for one, two, three fruit become established. We'll get a J hook and support that as well. Here on this truss, see that we actually coming right out of the end of the truss is a new apex that this plant has gone through and tried to put on, right? So an apex, a growing point that wants to establish new growth. And even off of that apex has got another new flower cluster coming off of an existing flower cluster, right? So we don't want this plant to be spending energy into developing that, so we need to cluster prune this back. And so we've got one, two, three fruits. So we're gonna cut this guy back to about here to remove all of that. So one, two, three, cut that there. And then we take our truss hook hook it on, support our truss. This is actually a apex that the plant's trying to put off just like a sucker, but instead of it coming off of the main vine, see where it's coming off of the tip of the cluster here. So when we see those, we wanna come in and remove them just the same way that we removed the sucker, pinch that off, see how that growing tip was there because we don't want the plant putting energy into developing that as a growing point. We want the plant putting the energy developing those fruit. So another thing that we see on this flower cluster is that we've got some over pollinating going on. You, I can tell this by how black the tip of that flower is. What we would ideally see like one or two bite marks on that from one bee visiting the flower, vibrating it and shaking the pollen. But with the size of our house, this flower probably opened today and I don't see where it's been bitten, even though I know that there has been bees that have visited this flower as I've been standing here working with it. Um, and maybe we've got a little bit of a notice where you can tell where the bees bit. We only we would want to go through and see this bee yellow with like one or two little bite marks on it, not to the point to where it's going through and turning black because over pollination can go through and stress and see there we go. We've got another bee who's landing right on there and trying to bite it and get more pollen off of that flower. And now he's going through and visiting here. So what over pollination does is it causes the plant to get stressed out and it'll actually end up aborting the uh, flowers and we'll end up missing clusters. So while I was going through here and working on truss supports and cluster pruning, I noticed that we had some of these growing points starting basically off of the leaf, right? So this variety 
is a rather vegetative variety and it goes through and it sends these auxiliary shoots off of anywhere that it can find, right? We looked at them coming off of the flower cluster. You see them coming here off of the leaf. So again, this is something that we remove to go through and concentrate those nutrients and energy that the plant's producing into the main growing tip and the fruit, not trying to make new growing points off of this because these will set flowers too, but we're not interested in the flowers going through and coming off of the leaves. We are only interested in the flowers and fruit trusses coming off of the main stem. Remove those so that we can concentrate the energy up the plant and into the fruit. This is a truss that we cluster prune and supported over the past couple weeks that we've got an ideal amount of fruit on here, which is going to be generally three to four per cluster, right? And they're all relatively the same size, being ready within a five days of each other. So this whole cluster should go through weather dependent, environmental dependent, and be all harvested within the same week. So here you'll see that we've got two fruit on this cluster, basically essentially the same size. But then when I come here, this fruit has set, but it's much, much smaller. So this flower, they're developed later for whatever reason. So it doesn't make sense to leave this on here due to the discrepancy in fruit sized. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here and prune this down to two to go through and have the fruit develop in the same amount of time within the same week. And take our truss hook again, hook that onto our truss, snake that back around, and hook it onto the string so now that that fruit truss has gone through and supported so it will not kink.